Hello and welcome to Adda with Kalyan. Now I've got this problem, I've got this big sweet tooth, I don't know about you guys but we Bengalis have a sweet tooth and I think whole of India has. Now what's really good for us is that the pastry scene in India has become really really exciting. Interestingly it's not because of some crusty old Italian or French chefs in the five stars of India but there are some women with a lot of spunk, a lot of talent and a lot of charm who've really been revolutionizing the pastry chef, uh, pastry chef scene in India and we've got some of the very best with us today in the Adda. Joining us is the lady who started it all off, Kainaz, uh, who started in 2004 with a charming little stall called Theom Brahma in Kolaba, which has now spread all over Mumbai and has become a real institution. We've got the lady who's known as Mumbai's very own macaron girl, Pooja Dhingra. We've got Sanjana with us, who's joining us from her home, and, and she's come in with a lot of ideas from France. She's looking like a little schoolgirl today, but she does some great uh, French-inspired work and is now getting into a fantastic competition going ahead. We also have a very interesting lady joining us from Delhi, Ipshita Chakladar. She used to be in media, she was an editor with uh, the NDTV network and then decided to go back to one of her earlier passions which was like art and she was deciding whether to be a painter or a baker and luckily for us decided to be a baker. So, so we've got this fantastic panel with us and we're going to talk about their journeys in the world of confectionery uh, today. So I'm going to start with you Kenaz, uh, it's, it's been a fantastic journey and, and you said that you wanted to stay small, but God had other plans for you. So how do you feel about uh, this journey? Well, it's uh, it's kind of like a mixed feeling. Um, I'm really happy that the company has expanded uh, to such an extent. And, you know, wherever I go, I see little shops of uh, our brand come up. But at the same time, somewhere deep inside me, I've always been the kind of girl that has wanted like a neighborhood cafe mm. and uh, nothing else. But uh, I think um, nothing was planned for Theobroma. I didn't have a five-year plan when I opened. Mm. I didn't even have a 50-day plan, to be honest. And um, uh, I just went with the flow. So all our growth has pretty much been organic up until now. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling. It's a good feeling to uh, see your brand grow in front of your eyes. Yeah, and, and, and you've always had these neighborhood cafes because mm -hmm. starting from Kolaba where mm -hmm. we used to go in for the brownies and cappuccinos and Bandra, BKC yes. and all over. And I think the Theobrahma charm comes through everywhere. Yeah, we wanted to create that. I mean, uh, initially the whole family used to be in the one store and then uh, that created like a big family feeling when you entered it. Um, and I always said that my greatest compliment is when customers say that Theobroma feels like home to them. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that we, we can't be everywhere. True. And so uh, even today uh, when uh, we go to our stores, uh, customers are always happy to see us. Uh, and we are happy to see them. I've seen your mom often at the store. Uh, yeah, in she's always there. Yeah. <laughs> she's always there. She looks after, uh, yeah. you know, the front of the house. Yeah. Um, she is head of retail for yeah. the brand. So um, it's good that she, you know, yeah. travels to each. And being stores, married to a Parsi, family. I know that pa Parsi yeah. moms really baby their daughters. Yeah, she's a feeder. She's a feeder. <laughs> she's not only uh, feeds me us, uh, but she feeds everybody. So she's the big feeder in our family. Fantastic, yeah. Pooja. How did you decide to enter Mumbai with macarons? I mean, at that time, no one really knew of macarons, so wasn't that a slightly uh, dicey decision? <laughs> Actually, the, it started off when I was in, in, in Paris and, you know, I'd lived in Switzerland for four years and then I moved to France. And the first time I stepped into like a, a, a French pastry shop, I was like, wow, what is this, you know? Um, I, you know, I'd been away from India for so long and then the first thought was like, okay, when I go back home, I must try and do this. And you know, my it was actually my dad who, when he came to Paris, I took him to a macaron shop and said, "Please eat this." And he's like, "You should make this." And I had all these excuses, like, "Oh, you know, you don't get the ingredients. Mm -hmm. The weather's not good." And he's like, "I'm sure you can figure it out." And you know, once I came back, I started experimenting with recipes. Many, many failed recipes later, it seemed to work. And um, yeah, so it's been it's been fun and. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about the macaroon lady tag, but it's it's nice, yeah. Yeah, because your red velvet cakes are like pretty good as well. They are, they're yeah. excellent. <laughs> in <laughs> fact, in your book, you have red velvet cakes as the cover, yes, not a, not yeah, a macaroon. Yeah. Was it conscious? Um, not, I, I think it was just a better picture. Also <laughs> with that. Your dad's also from the restaurant business. Um, you come from a restaurant uh, uh, family. My father has investments in restaurants. My brother went to hotel school with me and has his own restaurant called Oi Punjabi, hmm. which is on Bombay Nasik Highway, but they're opening in Bandra next yeah. week. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of like, we all do our own things, but at the end of the day, it's like support. So, you know that if you're working a 16 hour day, 
you understand why yeah. and you understand you know we can sit down and discuss it and that's great that's fantastic now if you are 12 years in uh, ndtv in the, in the media how did you decide to take the step into becoming a and getting into confectionery and making cakes oh uh, well i actually started off uh, baking when i was 12 and i went to ihm and uh, this is what i wanted to do but for some reason after working for the taj for 2 years i ended up with the media for uh, almost 14 years and towards the end of it i kind of uh, thought that you know if i had to have a bakery and if i really wanted to chase my dream i had to at least give it a shot and see if i can do it or not and one fine day i just launched ipshita's cakes mama bakes and uh, to be really honest i didn't think that you know i would uh, come this far i just did it because it was a passion and soon enough i realized that it was a choice between working for the media or chasing a dream and then i said that's it so i hung up my boots and i started on this new thing and i've been doing this now for quite some time and that's that's pretty much my story now So you know one thing which uh, interests me in Ipshita is that you know in my years of market research what I've seen is that Delhi is a very status and brand driven uh, market. So how did you convince people to order uh, confectionaries and cakes from you instead of going to the Oberoi Stages and the and the big hotels over there? Yeah that's um an interesting question because uh, you know till date I have not done any PR any marketing anything of the sort. It's clearly uh, word of mouth. and i kind of uh, believe that you know if you have quality whether is it it's in terms of your ingredients or whether because i do decorative cakes uh, whether it's your finish people do realize quality and people come looking for you and i've been very fortunate that i've had some very very nice uh, clients who stuck with me for uh, my entire journey and i've not gone looking for them they've come looking for me so i i truly consider myself blessed That's really fantastic, and and this issue of quality is so important to what each of you is uh, doing. So you know, there's this question which Amit Saman asked on uh, Facebook, and as and I thought is relevant to you. Uh, he was saying that there's so many pastry chefs who are opening uh, businesses in Mumbai, and then they're folding up because of high rental pressures and the fact that consumers don't want to like have prices increase. So and and you've had a wonderful run over. 11 years now huh? that's that's fantastic so how do you sort of ensure that you retain the quality and yet expand see uh, and may keep it, expanding it doesn't matter what price point you are at actually mm -hmm. what matters is that you have to have a perception of value for money you can choose to enter the market at any level yeah, whether you're yeah. high end you're low end you're mid range whatever you mm. decide that's fine that's your style and that's personal to you but if I think the Indians are actually. I think it's a global thing. If you are not perceived as a value for money place, people have to feel they don't mind paying the extra ten mm. rupees, twenty rupees, as long as they feel they are getting a value product in mm. return. Mm. The minute people feel that they are not getting that value for their money, they'll come to you once, twice, three times maybe. But after that, they might not come to you again. So I think it's very important that. you get value even look at yourself if you go to a restaurant today hmm. you want to feel that whatever price you're paying you're getting something in return yeah like i've i've found a chocolate in your product especially mm -hmm. the brownies were really fantastic mm -hmm. and when you're preparing for this interview i figured out that you don't use chocolate powders and i try and use uh, kuvicha i know uh, pooja also feels the same uh, i've always spoken out against using compound and fake chocolate um i think it's very rampant in our country uh this is only because uh you know a lot of people are afraid of tempering chocolate mm -hmm. when they use it to make pralines and things like that and a lot of people are of course afraid um to uh use it because you know it it melts quickly yeah, and uh, the Indian we heat, that's a do problem. have extreme temperatures yeah, in yeah, our city yeah. and you know um pretty much even in the north and you know places like that so it's very difficult uh, cold chain is almost almost non existent in our country so it's very difficult to maintain the temperature of your products 
and that's why you do lose a lot of taste mm. even with real ingredients you but lose I like a the lot fact that that you've not compromised you've like taken a stand and um, and decided to go ahead with what you think yes, is best yes because it was something very close to my heart i've always been against yeah, using yeah. compound and uh, over the years i've seen it go from just entering the market to become like a full booming industry Fantastic. in fact uh, you know uh, even my suppliers tell me that i'm crazy for continuing to use chocolate and cocoa butter and yeah. you know because compound is at half the price of yeah. chocolate so when people say some people say that yes your products are expensive but I'm i think not, the quality I'm really not, comes I'm through i'm not yeah. denying that our products are at a certain price range it's because i do not want to compromise on certain things and as, as someone who enjoys your products i can i can speak yeah. that in fact talking of the booming market we've got sanjana of lafali for us and i think sanjana's story is really exciting for a lot of bakers who want to enter the market now because sanjana you came in when the market was slightly established because you had folks like uh, kanas or pooja who who've made an inroad in it and uh, and and which is when you came in and which is going to be the story of a lot of bakers who are coming in now so in a market where there has been some thrust which has happened how does one stand out how did you decide to position yourself you know i mean when i uh, when i started i i wasn't aware of the market quite frankly um i was for a quite a quite a while i was away from the country for about almost 9 to 10 years um i saw developments happening i mean i saw that the market was opening the industry is building up but uh, with what i was best at when i was uh, working in france um you know i just wanted to get my own uh, you know uh, ideas back to the country and uh, you know make people explore and you know go on an adventure about you know different uh, textures in the product especially in a in, in pastry so you know i really wanted them to like you know in fact uh, try different kind of uh, ingredients uh, different flavor combinations and you know just uh, think out of the ordinary so so what are the new things which you've introduced to the market sanjana uh, we are starting with eclairs okay. and uh, we are going to be having uh, eclairs going pan in there and uh, we have we are going to be launching it by the end of this month so, so lafali is going to go pan india lafali is going yes, to go pan La india Fali's wow that's pan india in the next one year you have heard uh, that first here you know the the when we started for the first time uh, we thought that we will just be like you know doing desserts and doing french pastries uh, but then i started seeing the vibe and the pulse of the you know the younger audience in the market you know who were uh, who love cupcakes and who love macarons so i said you know why not introduce something which is uh, unique which the country has not tried and then we we are we are going into eclairs for that reason and i think it's something like a product like eclairs can you know uh, be expanded well so how how is it going to retail across the country are you going to open stores or you you're going to deliver yeah it? we are going to be uh, starting off into our current la folie stores and the upcoming new stores and we're going to be having kiosks going ahead as well so bakers out there who are looking for inspiration and hope i mean you you've got some fantastic examples over here and and sanjana is telling you how you can start off in one city and grow uh, across the, across the country that's really fantastic sanjana thank uh, you pooja you've you've written a book where you've shared a lot of your uh, recipes so weren't you worried that that will be copied a lot of the signature uh, recipes um no not really i mean you know uh, things i can give you a recipe but the way you make it and the way you make it every single day that's what really matters mm -hmm. um and each person brings their own sort of element to it mm. so there was never it was always a, a dream of mine because when i was young um there was you know when i was 12 13 and i used to bake there was like uh, you know i i bought international books and i couldn't understand how the ingredients and all of that So it was always in my mind that when I, you know, do something, I'm going to write a book to make it easier for mm. people who are in an Indian kitchen without access to ingredients and equipment and all of that. How you know we realized that a lot of Indian homes don't have ovens, and uh, you know that that was such a big problem, and it's something that you don't even think about. Yeah. And all these things just came to light, and it was such a pleasurable experience. And now when I see young girls, ten, eleven, twelve, come up to me and they're like, "Oh, I made this brownie. I made this cupcake. It's exciting." So you become a teacher also. Huh? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh Ipshita uh we've got some great news from you from our uh, for our viewers that you're opening a store in Delhi. So how did this uh, news or idea come about? I mean to, to get out of home and to open a well, store. 
actually for uh, quite a while people have been asking me when my store is going to be coming up and you know why i still have an open one uh, to start with like uh, kaina said that you know she wanted to keep it small and so did i because uh, i'm kind of a little bit of a control freak and you know the finish has to be right and i don't want anyone else touching it and all that kind of stuff so then i realized that uh, you know this was the time if i had to uh, sort of grow this was the time to do it i had reached my potential and so hopefully by october my first store is going to be up in south delhi that's great news and again thanks for sharing it us, uh, with us over here uh, sanjana i've got a question for you you came to india with a lot of ideas after being abroad for 10 years about what you wanted to do here and and you were faced with a market where you wouldn't get uh, ingredients that easily so how did you go about sourcing ingredients and and making adapting things for an indian market um you know um there there were a lot of issues when we started uh, but you know before we started our entire retail operation we were working from the back uh for about a year uh, getting our supply chain ready and everything and getting all the uh, import licenses in place uh my family business is actually into the import and export of agricultural products so that you know had a lot of leverage and uh, you know that helped us to you know get an ingredients into the country but uh, over the time we've been looking at you know local produce and i think the local produce is uh, becoming a much better quality right now and uh, we are seeing you know how the market is opening up uh, there are a lot of suppliers who have come in and uh, you know they they are providing good quality products so you know it's it's much easier right now so that's fantastic news again for people who want to uh, start bakery business I, i think all of you have really done the hard work and it's because of what all of you have done that uh, things are becoming more available and also people are getting ideas because how to use local produce and i think that's the way the market should go because cut down on carbon footprint get, develop things uh, internationally i know there are a lot of people who are doing inter- interesting things in organic chocolates organic cheese jams and stuff like that and i think the way to go forward is for producers like you uh, to work with uh, producers of local products and and sort of go t- ahead together sanjana there's a question for you from manisha talim who's a big lafoli fan and often gets uh, lafoli macarons uh, over for us at home she wants to know why do you not have uh, savory products in your uh, shop and do you plan to have any uh yes we are very very soon we did, we did we did like a world macaron day and we had a lot of savory concoctions uh, around that time but uh, going forward uh, we are opening up a new store and uh, we'll be having a lot of savory concoctions there over there we are getting into breads we are getting into venosery so we are you know we're expanding our product line so, so she she can be happy when she comes in <laughs> Yeah, she, she just uh, she she loves all all uh, pastry products, and then uh, she often comes with some great stuff. So um, I've got this very exciting panel with us uh, today, and and lot of experience which each of you brings, and and in very different fields and different scales. And I've got lot of aspiring uh, pastry chefs out there who would be looking for ideas. So I'm going to ask each of you, based on your diverse experiences, some tips to people uh, who want to start up their business in in bakery and. and confectionery and, and follow the path which all of you have sort of trailblazed in so i'm going to start with our off studio guests first and then come to you guys so first of all ipshita uh, tips to aspiring bakers on on what to do if they want to start a new business oh well uh, the first and foremost thing i feel is the passion because you know this is a lot a lot of hard work and i'm sure all of us agree on that there's there's no shortcut to it if you're passionate about it uh, you'll find a way to do things and uh, keep at it don't uh, don't give up there are times when you know you have sleepless nights and you know days together you just don't have time for yourself but it's a lot of hard work but there is a lot of satisfaction at the end of the day um, so you know give it a shot unless you give it a shot you never know so that that's what i feel that anyone who wants to try this uh, profession give it a shot and give it give yourself enough time to see whether you can do it or not there and you have to be on top of your game there has to be quality there is no compromise on quality and um, you have to be on top of the game at all times if you want to be the best in what you do that's a very inspiring message uh, ipshita 
what about you sanjana i i know that you plan to start an academy someday and i hope you do that so what are what are yeah. your tips and suggestions for people who want to follow your path uh i mean uh, you know i mean i look at myself in a little different way uh you know i mean i always wanted to become a you know do my phd and everything and uh, you know become a teacher or maybe become like a professor in pastry arts but uh, life took me to another another path uh coming back to india but uh, having said that you know for uh, to be in this industry or to be in this field you need to be very very you know innovative uh you need to think out of the box you need to see you know what what suits your clientele or what what is the niche that you really want to serve and you know sticking to your guns uh if you if you try to you know uh kind of go astray in the middle uh you know it's it's just going to get your audience confused so you need to like you know be uh you know quite sure before you get into something like this because it's a lot of hard work there's a lot of stress long work long work hours i mean i i am sure you know besides besides i mean i'm sure the other people who are there in the panel as well i mean there's like crazy work hours like 17 hours and 18 hours you know we are preparing for a competition for the world cup and um i'm back and forth in the country and and it's just a lot of hours so you know besides that you know it's it's also important to have uh, you know a little bit of uh, you know patience because success does not come that easily you need to work hard for it and uh, you need to just have a really nice personality towards your audience you know whenever they need some help there might be a customer there might be a aspiring student who comes up to you you know don't ever hesitate to help them because yeah, you never know who you can that's a great uh, message because ipshita was talking of passion and you reminded us sanjana that patience is very important as well so we wish you all the best for the world cup and and we'll be rooting for you and we also hope that uh, you become dr sanjana someday as well and and make your uh, get to do your phd so Thank pooja you. Ah, uh, well, what's what's your tips for people who want to like follow their um, dream in? I think it's a combination of what they both said. I mean, it's it's true, right? It is a lot of hard work, a lot of passion. Um, it's not as it's not at all like as glamorous as it may seem. You know, you're in the kitchen for long hours. But is it satisfying? Uh, because now I'm getting a bit scared. It's not glamorous. <laughs> a lot of hard work. Ah, uh, I mean, it has to be right. Otherwise, yeah. why would you do it, right? Yeah. Um, so it is. It is a lot of uh, dedication, hard work, and you kind of have to under like Sanjana was saying. You have to understand. you know what your audience wants who you're catering to i think the indian market is so huge there's like you know there's enough space for new for for, yeah. for for everyone yeah. so yeah. if you have an idea and you want to go forth with it like you must you must give it a try and um, do not be afraid right i mean yeah. it's 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 better to have no regrets at all yeah. so work hard i love that you you must give it a try yeah. so th that's a great message and and kenas you have seen the industry right from the beginning from the renaissance and uh, and you've grown uh, so much and and i'm sure there are a lot of practical lessons which you must have learned on the way some mistakes which you would have made and and sort of grown from that mm -hmm. so what are the practical tips which you would like to give us um, well there are so many actually um i think uh, you have to be able to uh, take the ups and downs so definitely um you know uh, doing business in india is not easy mm -hmm. um and uh, you have to be prepared for it uh, if uh, you are in the hospitality business you have to be prepared to listen to other people's opinions and uh, that takes a lot of patience and also a lot of courage because a lot of everyone will have an opinion on what you are making and why you are doing it and how to do it and how to make it better because food is again so subjective it's so uh, individualistic you know everybody um, thinks or wants to think they they know best um and so i think uh, you have to be prepared for that um also taking in everything everybody else said uh, i think it's also important to stay focused on uh, uh, what you love and uh, don't forget why you were in this uh, business in the first place uh, because it is very easy to forget um mm -hmm. you can easily be led uh, you know uh, in many different directions and uh, also i think uh, you have to get prepared to deal with a lot of tough situations 
um, government uh, agencies, uh, you know, difficult customers, uh, production, um, and uh, uh, even when you deal with your own uh, employees, uh, you have to be patient with them because. I think being uh, a woman must be that much tougher dealing with uh, um, male employees. Well. And stuff. Well, uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm assuming so. Like, it is easier today than when uh, I when started, started off, for yeah. sure. But I think it's also the progress of the organization. Um, you, uh, it's. Uh, I don't know if it's so much a man-woman thing in this case as much as it's a progress of an organization. Even you, not only have to prove yourself to your external customers that are customers that come to you day in and day but, out, but, but also so. your employees because but they have to earn your respect. Um, but, so I, but I think what you said is really, really important for anyone who's following any passion that don't forget what Cory started in the beginning, yeah. I think, and, and, and stick to your dreams. I think right. that's, that's right. an important I think that uh, is message. very important. And uh, also, don't be afraid of change. You know, so much changes. Yeah, so because, and, and you must have seen that um, over 11 years. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> there's and, been a and massive ride, change. And ride with, with the tides um, of change. Yeah, there is a massive change and you constantly have to move forward. You know, um, just put your head down, work, and just carry on. So I think, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I would suggest. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the Adda. I think this is what in Bengali we'll call a very mishti Adda or a sweet <laughs> Adda. And, and so many wonderful people to chat with and such great ideas, such inspiring uh, stories. So what I'm going to leave you at the end is uh, another place which I like to go in for, for the petit fours and the cupcakes and the brownies. Uh, one of my favorite stores where I often work, work out of, which is Candies in Bandra. And I'm going to leave you with uh, a clipping of a, a short a video which we've shot and put up on the finely chopped at Candy. So go and watch the Candy story over there and catch you soon on Adda with Kalyan.